Coming up, we will be on location at the Baltimore Center for Plastic Surgery in Baltimore, Maryland, discussing the latest advances in the rhinoplasty procedure and how it can help you get the nose you've always desired and improve your self-confidence with one of this region's top facial plastic surgeons, Dr. Randolph Capone. Dr. Capone is a board-certified facial plastic surgeon who received his medical degree from Emory University Medical School in Georgia. He has completed surgical training from Johns Hopkins University, and Dr. Capone is a member of the prestigious American Academy of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, among other organizations, and again is widely recognized as one of this region's leading doctors. Welcome, Dr. Capone. It's a pleasure having you on the Top Doctors program. Thank you, Rocco. It's great to be here. It's uh, your first time, in fact, on our program. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, rhinoplasty has certainly become one of the most popular cosmetic procedures uh, for both men as well as women. And I wanted to ask you if you can please tell us why it's become so popular. Thanks, Rocco. I, I think it's a, a great procedure that is applicable to, as you indicated, many different types of people young and old, and men and women. Um, we start seeing rhinoplasty patients around the age of 15 or 16, and I have patients in my practice all the way up to 70 or 80 who are seeking either a change in their appearance or an improvement in the way they breathe. Some both. Oh, very interesting. So there's obviously uh, medical benefits depending on the individual situation or problem or problems he or she may be experiencing, as well as for folks who just want the cosmetic uh, right. enhancement uh, exactly result right. from it. Exactly right. I think uh, traditionally uh, cosmetic rhinoplasty has been um, linked to about a 10 to 15 percent uh, airway reduction or there are 10 to 15 percent of patients who have cosmetic rhinoplasty who have airway problems that they never had before. So I think it's incumbent upon the surgeon to be an expert in the airway as well as in uh, appearances. So when you do a rhinoplasty, even if it's someone who just wants a a subtle change to their appearance, you have to make sure that they breathe better at the end of the operation than they do at the beginning. Now, what types of problems does rhinoplasty correct, Dr. Capone? The traditional ones that we think of, uh, if, if you don't like uh, the nasal appearance or you know, if, if, you're, if you find that when you're looking at yourself in pictures that are taking at events and you don't like the appearance of your nose, like a hump or a twist or uh, uh, problems with uh, uh, asymmetry in the nose, uh, if it's too large, you know, that's a common complaint. True do, if the tip is too droopy, um, that's a common complaint. Too upturned, you know, everybody's looking for kind of the, what they think is the ideal uh, nose, and we try to improve things. What are some of the latest advances that have taken place in recent years related to rhinoplasty that can benefit so many folks out there? Not in regards with new technology so much. It's with gentle tissue handling techniques. So we try to get patients operated upon and back to their normal life as quickly as possible. So we do things in a, uh, as minimally invasive a way as, as we can to you know, minimize swelling, minimize bruising, make the post-operative recuperation shorter in duration and more pleasant. And then uh, I think that's really where a lot of the, the new methods and new thrusts of rhinoplasty are taking us. That less invasive now, as, uh, it, that can benefit for the reasons right. you just stated right. so many folks. Exactly. They can get back to their lives, not to mention back to work that much sooner. That's right, and, but, but yet equally as effective or even more so. Yes, Yes. It, with more natural looking results. Absolutely. And how is this procedure performed? Because I'm sure there are folks like myself and others that are watching right now that are wondering what's the basic process uh, from contacting your practice right through the, to the end of the treatment? There are many different ways to do rhinoplasty. Um, one of the more recent uh, kind of uh, methods that people are, are talking about is injectable rhinoplasty, where uh, product is injected into the nose. Uh, as a surgeon, uh, we're very careful because uh, uh, some people don't tolerate the injections very well and the product that goes into the nose as an injectable can have uh, kind of reaction. You can have a reaction to the product. So in very, very limited instances would I ever do an injectable rhinoplasty. But it is all, it's kind of in the, in the media now and people are 
hearing about it. We do get phone calls about it, but I would caution uh, uh, viewers and say that only a very special and very small subset of patients are actually eligible for an, uh, an injectable rhinoplasty. Okay. It only cures a very few small number of, of uh, nasal deformities sure. and can be associated with problems. Um, so that, I just wanted to mention that for completeness. Yes. The standard rhinoplasty techniques are closed and open techniques. Closed rhinoplasty is done without any external incisions and can be viewed of a, 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 as kind of rhinoplasty through the nostrils, so there's no visible scars. And for some patients, that's all that we need to do is make some internal incisions in the nostrils, nothing visible, and we can make some adequate shape changes and, and airway improvements. The, the workhorse uh, rhinoplasty that we all kind of think of and, and is mostly uh, the case today is what's called an open rhinoplasty, where a small incision is placed underneath the, the nose between the nostrils, and that gives the surgeon uh, exposure to all the structures, both bony and cartilage and soft tissue, to make all the refinements and all the very subtle changes that, that we need to, and still uh, make it essentially scarless. There's really virtually no scar with an open rhinoplasty. That is the workhorse method for rhinoplasty today. I would think that's the gold standard, like that you just said. That's correct. the one that most people uh, take right. advantage of and, and basically is best for them. Right. And to find out all this, they would obviously come in, do a consult, evaluation, uh, and I'm sure it's customized as far as which particular uh, version of rhinoplasty or option of rhinoplasty is best for each patient is determined by you and the patient Correct. working together. Correct, exactly. You know, we have a process where the patients come in, they usually meet with my cosmetic coordinator initially and uh, express to them their desires, and then I usually spend about an hour with every rhinoplasty patient up front. We talk, I examine them, we discuss their goals um, and kind of their time frame for doing something. And then we end every initial session with a photo review where we take photos and then I uh, digitize those photos and manipulate them using the computer methods. Um, and we end the session then and I invite them back in about a week for a, a, what's called a digital imaging review where we put their images on the large screen and we can morph them and show them up front their rhinoplasty result without ever having gone to the, to the operating room. So right. that really is a great and very effective communication tool that really shows patients what they'll see, uh, uh, what a rhinoplasty would do for them before they have the rhinoplasty. Now, how long does each uh, procedure generally take? And I preface that by saying with the disclaimer that I'm sure it varies depending on each patient and, and how much work is done on each patient. Yep. But in general, what is somebody looking at, doctor? It's about 150 minutes. That's it. It's about two and a half hours. That's it. That's all it is, right. So they can literally come, get it done in a couple of hours or so, mm -hmm. and then after that, is there any downtime that they would experience? I would uh, tell everybody that it's about a five-day recovery. Okay. Uh, there's a cast that we usually generally put on the nose, and uh, uh, we, there are some sutures in, involved that we have to remove. All of those things are gone at five days. Okay. You can still have the bruising and swelling and kind of other kind of recuperative issues that you have to work yourself through, but really the, the, the hard and fast downtime of standard rhinoplasty, open rhinoplasty approach would be five days. Which is not long at all to have the nose that we want. That's right. As that soon as I've ever had anybody go back to work was a vascular surgeon and she just felt like she had to get right back to seeing patients and she went back in four days to, to, the, to surgery. And you already mentioned earlier, doctor, that if uh, through the, at the end of the process, at the end of the procedure, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of which one of these rhinoplasties, whether it's open or closed or, or even the injectables, it, for those small percentage of people that uh, qualify for that or, or would be a good candidate for that, I take it the breathing, as you said, is at least the same, if not better, after the rhinoplasty Correct. procedure. We have a, a philosophy here at the Baltimore Center that says that every rhinoplasty patient will breathe better or the same, but we do everything we can to augment the airway at the time of the cosmetic improvements. So we don't want anybody, zero, we have a zero tolerance yeah. for someone having a worse airway after a rhinoplasty. You should always breathe better, or at the very least the same. And are the results permanent? We have people asking us that. Look, after I have a, a nose job, if people have called it over yeah. the years, yeah. after a rhinoplasty procedure, <clears throat> are the results permanent? The results are permanent and they don't uh, disappear. 
that's one of the nice things about rhinoplasty. You know, when, you, when we do breast augmentation, my colleagues that do body work, you know, there are revisional and uh, additional procedures that they tell patients right off the bat, look, if you're going to have a breast augmentation, 10 to 12 years, you're probably going to need a new, uh, you know, a new surgery. Yeah. With rhinoplasty, we try not to do that. We make changes that are permanent. We do the surgery with that in mind, and we always try to only use um, graft materials from the patient themselves. So very rarely do we actually use silicone or medpor or other kind of artificial implants that could be rejected or lead to long-term problems. So it, while it's true that the, the patient's faces continue to age and, and noses do continue to change just like the rest of our bodies, we, the changes that we make during rhinoplasty are permanent ones. That's, that's significant, uh, and I wasn't aware that it's natural materials that are utilized, yes. as you just touched on. Yes. Now, I understand that in addition to uh, being one of this region's top plastic surgeons, obviously we've discussed rhinoplasty, and you're certainly one of the leaders in that uh, specialty as well throughout this area, but you and your practice here also have specialized in facial rejuvenation with various treatments uh, that you offer, and I wanted to ask you if you can t please tell us about that as well as the spa that you have here on the premises. We have a saying at the Baltimore Center that says that if it concerns your face, it concerns us. So we have this a global philosophy that if you have a problem with your face or you have a concern that you don't like, you know, come here, we'll take care of it. I think we're uh, a, a very non-imposing, very friendly, relaxed practice that um, we offer all the med spa services for facials and peels and skincare products. Um, uh, I do eyelid surgery and brow rejuvenation, cheek lift, uh, mini lift, face lift, submental liposuction for uh, patients who have fullness under the neck. Um, anything that has to do with facial rejuvenation, yeah. face lifting, um, something that I, I is near and dear to my heart. So we we really take a top-down approach for anything that uh, concerns someone's face. Making us look many years younger in the process. As much as we can, yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and obviously you have the the uh, fillers and the Botox and other treatments that your Absolutely. folks offer here Absolutely. as well. That's right. All the injectable treatments we do. Yes. IPL photofacials, which is a laser-based uh, uh, light therapy, um, uh, all the way up to the surgical uh, treatments. Now, uh, some of the non surgical treatments that you just mentioned. For folks out there that are watching, uh, is this something they can come and have done even during their lunch time, for example? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I think one of the beautiful things that has happened in my field in the past, let's say, 15 years or so, has been the uh, overwhelming kind of preponderance now of, you know, let's get in, let's have something done right away and get right back to, you know, I have a dinner date tonight or, you know, my anniversary is tonight, you know, something quickly and people come in for the lunchtime treatments all the time and and the injectables are absolutely in that kind of category because we know. hear about these lunchtime makeovers yes absolutely and that's what that I would agree. fall absolutely. under absolutely absolutely we do tear trough uh, uh, fillers and cheekbone enhancements and Botox and patients uh, put a little bit of makeup on and they're right out the door back to work or back to whatever event they have to go to. Yeah, It's definitely. pretty remarkable, actually. What And what type of results can people ex expect from these treatments at the spa that you offer? Very natural looking results. If, if you're gonna be in the med spa with my medical esthetician, Mary, um, you're gonna uh, leave with a refreshed uh, look, a refreshed appearance. Uh, sometimes you can be a little pink and sometimes necessitate a little bit of makeup application, but generally your skin should feel smooth and, and look very vibrant. Um, with the injectable uh, treatments that I do, same kind of thing. I mean, you should, you know, in many instances, you can see that result right away and right out the door, and you know, have the results immediately. There are a few products that we use that stimulate your own collagen and your own kind of uh, rejuvenation internally from within your own face. Um, those treatments don't necessarily give you the Im immediate improvement when you leave. It's more of a process. So, mm -hmm. so someone might come in and. Uh, have two or three sessions with us and then over time their own collagen kind of bl blossoms and then they get their results l longer but l later down the road. And it lasts that way a lot longer. Exactly, it can last up to two to three years sometimes, that's right, yeah. which is different than uh, some of the, the ones that we inject and you have the immediate effect. And, uh, and certainly I know from the research we've done on you and your practice, you, the patients love you all. I mean, you really treat them like family from what I've heard, literally. Yeah, I think that's another strength of the practice is that from the minute you call the first time, you should uh, have a great experience on the telephone. And then yeah. when you come into the reception area, 
you know, you'll meet everybody and uh, from A to Z, and I think everybody's super friendly. We we go out of our way to really make people feel at home and like their family. Yeah. Because I always tell people, you know, I'm only uh, I treat you as if you were. Uh, and I actually say that a lot during a consultation. I'll be like, if you were my brother, you were my sister, you were my mother, and my father. This is what I would recommend. And I really try to approach my medicine and my surgery exactly like yes. that. Well, that says it all. And on that note, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Capone, for joining us, educating us, and enlightening us on rhinoplasty and the other services that you're helping so many folks in this whole region with and, and being a guest on our program. We'd love to have you back on in the future. Thank you, Rocco. My pleasure. Thank My you. Pleasure.